You just heard then what ordinary people said, and I have to say, you know, there were a range of ages, a range of gender and a range of ethnicities, and it's clear people have strong, almost unanimous views. However, as we know, voters in New South Wales did not get a chance to air their views before the March election when the Premier deliberately, she now admits, kept this issue off the table for fear it would create waves. Well, even a political novice could have told her that, but... Given she knows now the public want to be consulted on these radical changes and they want MPs to consider the detail carefully and take their time if needed, you've got to ask why Premier Berejiklian is persisting to rush this legislation through the parliament and knock back requests for more time to enable proper community consultations. Now, these calls aren't just coming from outside Macquarie Street. Two-thirds of her own Liberal colleagues in the House voted against the legislation. And today, one of her upper House Liberals has gone public, calling for more time. And as an MP on the committee inquiring into these draft laws, she knows the detail better than anyone. Former New South Wales Liberal Party president and now New South Wales upper House MP, Natasha McLaren-Jones, joins me now live from Sydney. Thanks very much for coming on the show tonight, Natasha. I know this is a, is a really tough issue. I appreciate it's a conscience vote, but you wrote a very powerful piece in the newspaper today. As I said, you're a party president, former party president, as well as an MP. You've got a very good understanding of the membership base in New South Wales. Why the rush? Why not raise it in an election? Uh, why not now that people are being delivered this issue on abortion, uh, are you not consulting with them as a government? Uh, thank you very much for having me on uh, tonight, Peter. Look, this is one of the questions that a lot of us are asking. Uh, there is no need to rush this through. Uh, the abortion debate is a very sensitive, uh, it's a very personal issue. Uh, we have the time to not only consult widely with the community and hear from expert, experts, but to look at what type of legislation that we need to really put through. All right, so you're on the committee inquiring into this bill. Give me a sense of, um, I mean, have you sought submission? How long did you give people to get submissions in? Or not you necessarily, but how long were you allowed to give people to get submissions through? And what's been the response? Well, this bill was introduced into uh, the lower house on the 1st of August. Uh, on the 7th of August, uh, there was a press release that went out uh, to advise that there would be an upper house inquiry uh, looking at the legislation. Uh, the final bill that was passed uh, was done so on the 8th. Uh, so most people had uh, the, the full bill, bill which was amended, uh, on that Friday. Uh, submissions were called and in the inquiry commenced around five days later. Uh, having said that, we've received uh, around 13,000 submissions uh, from people. Uh, unfortunately, uh, due to the time uh, that we've been given, we've only been able to conduct two full days of, of hearings, uh, which were held this, this week, uh, with another couple of hours this morning. Uh, but we, as I said, 13,000 submissions is a lot of submissions. Now, you and I know, having uh, been around the political game for a long time, 13,000 submissions... By the time you write your report for this then to be considered ahead of the votes in the Upper House, you won't have read 13,000 submissions. I doubt anyone on the committee will have read 13,000 submissions. This is a whole sham process. I don't understand the haste. I know that you are rejecting it being pushed through like it is. Are you going to see the Premier about this issue? Do you think that anyone's going to be able to speak to her and, and get her to rethink at least the process? Well, I'm sure uh, uh, there'll be a number of people that will be raising this. Obviously, we go back on, on Tuesday. Uh, we'll be looking at the report uh, and the committee will, will be finalising the, uh, the report on Monday uh, to be tabled in the Parliament on Tuesday. Uh, at this stage, we're being told that the debate will commence on Tuesday. Uh, we have an opportunity uh, to certainly have the debate and then, following that second reading debate, adjourn it. Uh, and then open up another inquiry. There's no need to have a five-day inquiry on this important issue. Uh, there are a number of ways uh, to deal with this, and, and one important thing is we've had suggestions from, from some of the uh, witnesses this week, uh, is looking at a four- to six-month uh, inquiry, allowing experts to come through and look at the key issues that people are raising. Uh, and, and you talked earlier, and we've heard uh, people are raising uh, the sex 
uh, selection as an issue. Mm. Uh, we're also hearing about counselling. There's a number of things that, and questions that people are asking that really need to be answered before we put this bill through. Uh, one of the things that came through very clearly when you listen to what people are saying there on the street, uh, there's a great reluctance with late-term abortions and should the cut-up that cut-off that's proposed in the legislation be altered in some way? And should a late-term abortion be allowed for any reason, which it will be under your laws, proposed laws, or whether it should be contained to, you know, grave risk to the mother's life or um, grave health risks or health concerns in relation to, to the unborn child? Uh, should it be allowed for social reasons? Do you think that, uh, you know, something like losing your job gives anyone the right to terminate a pregnancy at 35 weeks. And this is the challenge uh, that we need to look at uh, as, as legislators but and the concerns that are being raised. Uh, I think it's important that uh, we allow uh, uh, women to be able to uh, abort a child for, the, for, their, for their health. Uh, also there's, and was presented, uh, situations where uh, it uh, is in the interest of a, a, another uh, fetus as well. But I think that the challenge that uh, being presented and what is confronting is where uh, women are, are put into a situation of, of having to choose uh, because they're worried they can't support the baby, uh, or worse, uh, they feel that they have to, to have an abortion uh, for, for other pressure that's being put on them. Natasha, you've been really strong on women's issues for as long as I've known you. Um, you know, I, I don't expect you like this idea of being able to abort the child of the sex you don't like, and we know that often it's the female child is, is aborted over the male child. Um, surely that can be fixed. Well, there has been amendments that uh, our colleagues in the lower house have put forward, uh, and then certainly we'll be putting forward amendments uh, in the Legislative Council as well. Uh, we need to make it very clear, and I, I, I take it as goodwill, and the, the lower house did you know, unanimous, unanimously say that they don't support this, but we need to make it clear. Uh, the reality is that the, the majority of, of doctors will be doing the right thing, but we have to ensure that there is no one uh, that believes that it is OK to abort a baby because they don't like the gender. Yeah, but just on that point, I mean, that, that, that specific amendment moved by Tanya Davies was put to the lower house and your leader voted against it. She voted against an amendment that would make illegal an abortion or a termination based on the sex of the child and that alone. Your leader supported that. Now, two thirds of your colleagues didn't sit with their leader What's that got to say about uh, where Gladys Berejiklian sits in relation to the Liberal Party room? Look, the, the issue of, of abortion is a sensitive issue and, and more importantly, it is also uh, a conscience vote uh, for our party and that means also the amendments. Uh, and every amendment needs to be taken at, uh, at face value, looked at in detail. Um, and from the Upper House point of view, uh, we'll be doing that uh, and I will certainly be looking at every single amendment uh, that is put before me, which is why I was disappointed uh, that uh, some of the, the, the movers of, of uh, this legislation have already ruled out that they will not accept uh, amendments on sex selection. And just before we go, um, you know, you've got your ear to the ground, as I said, former party president. I've spoken to a lot of uh, Liberal Party members in New South Wales in particular. You would know the base is angry. How are you going to bend... Bridges here, Natasha. The one of the, the things that I've noticed in and since this uh, uh, debate has commenced, and that was early August, I've received over eight thousand emails, uh, personal emails as well as as phone calls, um, and people are angry. Uh, I would say on average 96% of the the correspondence I've received is people are angry with what's happening. I, I what I want to see is just to slow down, people to take a breath look at the legislation in detail and look at what amendments we need to make to ensure that we're not only delivering the best legislation for the people of New South Wales, but it's also in line with what the community expects us to deliver. All right, I, I agree with you and, as I said to you, terrific piece today in the paper. It's just asking for a much. sober, sensible time frame and to adhere to good practice. I hope when the uh, Premier gets back from overseas, uh, you and others can have these conversations with her in private uh, as strongly as you have in public today. Thanks very much for your time, and Natasha McLaren-Jones. Thank you, Peter.